Well done. Very proud of you. Uh, you have so much personal um, knowledge on this topic, but I do wonder what is something in your research that surprised you as you were researching your thesis, something you weren't expecting to learn? Well, there's a lot. <laughs> but the main thing is that most of the orphans, that are so-called orphans, are not. I think that is the most thing that kind of got to me is, even though many of them believe they are, but they're not. And it just was really surprising to realize that even the orphanages have based their morals, have based their morals based on money. I think that's the most surprising thing that I found in my research. Other judges, questions? Ron, you said something to me that was very interesting. 90% um, of orphans are actually not orphans. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't think a lot of people know that. And I uh, did international adoption myself and kind of looked at some of that. Um, for families looking at international adoption, what are some ways they, they can be wise about it and ensure that this is done outside of corruption actually and helping the kids? Well, that's interesting. Because even when we do adoption with corruption involved, it's expensive. It costs a lot of money. But to do it the right way is going to cost even more time and money. I think that's the hardest part people struggle is that if you want to do it the right way, you have to pay extra to do a search for personal search for the child's parents. Because if you're going with the information based on what the agency provides you, there's high possibilities they're not telling the truth. Because they don't want to put more time or more money to investigating for more family members that exist about the, ch about the child. So I think doing personal search might prevent corruption and do it the right way. Uh, Baran, um, well done. Um, I, I find your uh, call to selflessness very compelling. Um, and I think it's important to be heard. Uh, but um, I think maybe as a point of clarity or, or uh, um, to dig into something a little bit deeper that might be uh, somewhat uncomfortable. Um, do you think that um, America's desire for international adoptions, and I, and I think it sounded to me like you, you may have even alluded to this, that America's desire for international adoptions is in some way uh, enabling corrupt practices and enabling the mistreatment of children in other countries. Would you um, agree with Can that? You can you rephrase the question? Like sure. So, um, as uh, so, so uh, us in a first world country um, wanting to help in some way mm -hmm. uh, and wanting to adopt and to um, bring children who are in horrible situations out of them mm -hmm. is that desire and the money that's going from our end to these countries is that enabling the very mistreatment? that we're trying to solve, is, would you say, is, is, are, we, are we part of the problem in other ways? Is there a way that adoption is actually contributing? I think it depends how it's done. Again, right. because if the, attention, if, if the attention to help others, I think there's a right way to be done. Right. Because I feel like adopting, adoption families in this case are going at it in the wrong way, or to be specific, the easy way out. Because if, people want to adopt children without corruption, like I mentioned before, it's going to cost even more money. Right. I, I'm not saying America is doing that or encouraging corruption. It's just the way they approach adoption is wrong. I think they should be, it should be in a way that is done the right way, where that does not involve corruption. Um, well done, Ron. I'm so proud of you. Um, my question kind of piggybacks onto something that Mr. Fant just asked. Um, a lot of countries have actually begun to tighten their international adoption laws as a response to criticism about practices within their countries. Um, are you opposed to international adoption in its current state? And what I mean is, do you think that we should have a reset in international adoption practices and halt international adoption? 
or should we allow it to continue while we try to improve the process? I think it is a really hard place to be. Because either way, closing it now, it will hurt the children who are in the process of getting adopted. And basically, basically will increase the, the orphan population even more because there's not children getting out of the way. And I said it just be more of them. But at the same time, I think if there is a way to do it, I think we should definitely, definitely restart the process with government involved so people are not running their own individual orphanages that does not involve corruption. So I really don't know how I feel about that because it's really like gray area for me. Um, I have another just question, <clears throat> and uh, I think we all, I think I, I probably speak for all of us, and we, we really appreciate your candor and just your, uh, your honesty and even sharing some of your story with us is uh, very moving. Um, and again, your call to selflessness is so good. Um, what, I am, uh, what I am left wondering is um, how, how is it so we in America, and, and it's easy to generalize this, we're materialistic, um, and we do uh, you know, eat too much, buy too much, throw away too much. How, but how do we contribute? I'm looking for the connection between, where's the connection between that, the selfishness, and the plight of the children in a third world country? What would you say is the connector there in your, in your thesis and in your research? Is, is there a connection there between? Selfishness uh, here, and uh, in a way, yes, because like you just said, we buy too much, we eat a lot, and we throw the rest. Right. What I'm calling is that and instead of buying that much food, just buy what you need, and maybe use some of that money to foster someone, so that children don't get involved with the adoption process, where they have to wait ten, five, or six years Good. in an orphanage. Yeah. From experience, orphanage life is not the best thing. Mm -hmm. It's 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 the one of the worst situations it can be, at least in some cases. But the connection there is that, like you said, we buy too much, we eat too much, and we throw the rest away. But imagine if you use that money, or some of, the, some of the money you just threw away, to help someone who actually needs food, water, and shelter. To, basically, like, I think that's the general Thank connection you. for me. Thank you. That's a great segue into one of the questions that has been texted in. Did you come across any organizations um, in your research that would be worthy of support? If someone, for example, could not afford to uh, adopt a child internationally, are there organizations that you may know of that would be worthwhile to support that would help? I think Compassion International does a great job of sponsoring children. I think those are definitely one that should be the organizations that should be supported because many of them get education through our college because of international. Compassion and national support. So, international compassion is one. International. Compassion international. Compassion international is one of them. Really. Any other judges' questions? Uh, sure, Bron. Thanks again uh, for an awesome presentation. Um, just as a general question, uh, what advice would you give to a family considering international adoption, considering your experiences and what you've gone through and the point to where all this has brought you? Uh, again, personal search. Like, don't go with the information that is all provided by the adoption agencies. Mm. Like I mentioned before, because it all comes back to money and convenience. So if they, gonna, if they, gonna, if they realize it's going to take longer, it's going to cost them more money and time, I'm going to tell you they're not going to put as much effort to searching for, biolog for biological parents. They're going to do it for a little bit to make people believe at least they did, not because they actually want to. Adoption is not bad again. I'm not against it. But I am saying that maybe you should do a little bit of personal search, like my parents did for me and other three children they adopted. All of them, they'd done a personal search for each of us before they even started the process. So maybe put more time and money to looking for biological parents. Because even instead of adopting, if you realize there's adoption, before they get adopted, if you realize there's family members, supporting the child through the family does more than adopting, because at least it keeps them with their families. So you'd be surprised. Many people, when they do their personal search, they find they have a parent, and you know, and instead of taking away from them, you can just support them while they live with their family, if their intention is to help a child. Another question. 
question from the audience. <coughs> uh, would you recommend adopting domestically, like here in the U.S., over international adoption? <laughs> Again, very gray area because I feel like the lifestyle of an American orphan compared to the third world country orphans is just two, indif in two different scales. Like you can't compare it. Because most of us, at least in America, we, I think we have enough food or shelter and education, the least. But in, the third, world, in third world countries, that doesn't even happen. So I wouldn't say choose domestically, but I would I think you should definitely adopt domestic. I'm not saying only adopt internationally, but I feel like I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know where I stand on that either. And then very a follow on for that. I had a couple of questions um, to the nature of even if there is a family member for a child in that third world country, wouldn't it be better that they come to America, where we do have more food, shelter, and education? I uh, definitely not. It's like. Okay. No, I don't believe that's better. Because, yes, they might have all the food or they might have all the education they need. But I think keeping them with their family is more important. Because if the intention is to help the child, I think you can support them while they still live with their families. I think the biggest issue with at least the world countries is that money. If they have the money and they have the education and they have the food, I think they'll be content to live with their families. I don't think they would choose the idea of leaving their country and their families to have a better life. Um, sure, I'll hit one more. Uh, you talked a lot about family in your, uh, your, your speech. Obviously, that means a lot to you. Um, through this process, you being adopted by the Scots, well, how has this changed your, your view of family? And for you, does this parallel how Christ adopted us? Uh, yes, actually, in a way, I think definitely has helped, kind of helped me see a family in different perspective. Mm -hmm. You see, a family, at least, I mean, I never had one, so I can't really talk from experience until I get adopted. Uh, in a way, yes, because it's like Christ welcoming strangers into his family. And adapting a child from a foreign country is doing the same thing. It's like you don't know anything about the child. You're not just taking the child, you're taking their challenges for them, their pains for them, their sufferings for them. I think in a way, yes, it does relate in how Christ is adapting us. And personally, I, I think I've experienced more personal life, uh, I guess I've experienced more joy in my life having a family, but I, I'm just going to say, like, it definitely have changed me in a way that I can't explain. It's just, it's too much for words. All right, well, I guess, any other questions from judges? All right, let's give Ron a round of applause.